Hey everyone, Stephanie from Mrs. D's Corner. Today I'm here with Megan and we are so, so, so excited to share with you all about progress monitoring. So first I wanna start out by letting Megan introduce herself and then we can kind of go from there. So I'm Megan Dent. I am in my 12th year of teaching um, and kind of I've been in special ed my whole career. I've moved around and done a couple different jobs within special ed, um, but I'm currently in Pinehurst, North Carolina, and I'm actually moving back after the end of this school year to Georgia to be near our family again. So um, kind of another like transition period, and I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet, but I'm really <laughs> see about it so where in Georgia are you going to be um so we are from a really small town called Trenton which is like as far northwest as you can go and still be in the okay. state northwest um, okay west. yeah so we're really close to Chattanooga Tennessee that's what okay. we can do a lot okay so. well we just moved from the Atlanta area down here to Florida so we love Georgia's beautiful like so beautiful that's so exciting yeah. we're really excited it's nice to be like it's truly, we have two daughters um, and my husband travels a lot for work. So yeah. we really need our village and we are heavily reliant on our village and so thankful for them. So we're glad to be closer again. I'm so excited for you guys. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to quick go through how I progress monitor, which is kind of what led us together because yeah. Megan, was it last week or the week before that you tagged me on Instagram? Yeah, I think it was, it, I can tell you exactly when it was. Um, <laughs> it was, it was March 24th because that is when, or March 23rd, because that's progress reports were due on the 24th and I was finishing up my quarterly progress reports. So oh. yeah. So she tagged me on a post on Instagram stories about how she adapted the binder ring data. I don't have a ring on them, but I, progress monitoring data ring. So I'm just going to show you them. I don't have a ring on them right now. But um, how she adapted them for her classroom, and I was like, girlfriend, we need to teach other people. Well, she needs to teach other people how to adapt this because I like want to know all the things. I am mind blown. Um, so I want to share how I do it like super fast, which is going to be a record for me because I could talk forever about this. <laughs> um, but basically how I progress monitor is I do everything on sticky notes. And I just did this one really quick. So... Um, in the top here, I'll put like what we're doing. So I just said, cause today's April 1st, we're doing an April Fool's adapted book, an adapted book for April Fool's. This is the date. And then this is the student. So I just used myself SD. And then this is the correct trials, incorrect trials, and then the final here. And then what you do is you take that data and you put it into your child's and your student's binder ring. And each student has one. So you have a cover on the front and then each page you give your students, um, you take their IEP goals and you put them in here. So it's backwards, but it says the student will be able to answer what questions about a story, 70% accuracy, four out of five trials. So basically you have all of the months here and then you have four dots. Now you can completely edit any of this, which Megan knows and she's going to share with you. Um, but then you just take that data. So this is the adapted book. I'm pretending that's what we did was comprehension questions. So it is April 1st. So you, these are the months of the year. So April 1st would be in the first dot and you would literally just take that sticky data and throw it into your binder ring data here. That way, when you go to do your progress reports, all you have to do is grab this for all of your students and you can literally do progress reports from anywhere. So that was the preface behind like what I needed in my classroom when I created them. And that is what brought Megan into my life. And she's going to share um, with you how she adapted them. And I have questions written up here. So I'm going to try and follow them. I usually wing everything. Um, so let's look at, now we're going to chat about how you did it. Okay. How you adapted it. So okay. what prompted your need to search for a new way to do your data collection? Um, so it honestly just came down to the fact that I needed to be able to write down just a little bit more than what I could fit in the little box. Yeah. But the start of the whole thing and the reason that I loved the box was because I could look at, I could look at that chart and I could see, okay, I've collected data this week. Like I know that I have it because I can see it right there on the month. And I love that it was all in one place. Like I wasn't 
progress reports would take forever. Let me go get this data from over here where I've collected it in this spot and then this assessment. And it was just a nightmare to manage when you try to do it at the end of a quarter. So, um, you know, I just, I knew data is like, I like, don't tell me how you feel about a kid. Let me, let me see what the data says. Cause I got lots of feelings, but I want to be, you know, objective and I want to make sure, you know, cause sometimes I might be a little bit too like positive, like, yeah, we've got this. Like I got, I feel it in my gut, but I want to look at my data and I want to see it. And so, um, literally taught for 10 years and probably used 20 different data collecting measures until I came to yours. And so I started using the binder rings um, when I was teaching special education preschool. Okay. And yeah. So what I found there was that in special ed preschool, the kids were really heavily dependent on prompts a lot of times. And so I had to be able to explain, okay, Yes, this data looks the same, but the prompt level is different. So right. I need one more square. I just need one more square. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of where I started. <laughs> and what kind of like, what drew you to the binder rings? Like you said, you taught, you tried so many other different things and I have too. What drew you to like, this is it. Like, I know this is it. Um, and it really was that feeling of like, th this is the one that's going to work. <laughs> like I, I've, I've, I've dated all of the progress monitoring types of, you know, data. <laughs> this, this is it. This is my lifer. So um, I loved that it was in one place and every child's entire IEP was on that binder ring and I would color code my kids. And so I, just because it worked in my brain, like very visual. So I could see, I can still remember this one student, he was red, that was his color. So every day when we did centers, I had my card of center materials and my binder rings were there. So they would wheel with me over to centers and we would do our activities and I would take it from, I had a weekly sheet that I kept their activities on that I didn't care if it got messy. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, and I'm a, I'm a post-it note lover too. So <laughs> it, it made it to a sticky and then it went straight to that. It went straight to that binder. And I, it was literally all about accountability for myself to be able to say, I took data the second week of February. I know I did. It's right here. And that, that accountability was really important to me. Um, I'm very kind of, I, I'm very type A by the book and I know how important data is and I know that I need it to draft my goals to update parents on progress. So I had to have something that worked and it just did. Like the binder <laughs> just worked. We're like kindred souls on this because I feel like I did data the same way. Like I would have like a weekly sheet uh -huh. and we would write in what all the kids did and then all of my sticky notes would go on that weekly sheet and then you know, at the end of the week, or if I had time at the end of the day, everything would go into the binder rings. Yes. Like, and they would keep the binder rings would stay in their color coded bins. Yes. And if I said, please go grab your, your binder rings, they knew exactly what I was talking about. They knew exactly where to grab them. Like we are kindred souls on this. Yes. I am in love. I'm in love. <laughs> um, all right. So from there, you kind of touched on this a little bit, um, for needing, you know, the need to add in a prompt level and adding one more little box. Yes. So share with us about how you adapted it and what that looks like now and kind of how that has changed how you collect data in your classroom. So, um, like I said, I was in, at the time I was in special education preschool and, um, it was a more self-contained type setting. So that for me as being in control of, of this schedule and organization, it made it easy to, you know, kind of set up my progress monitoring time. And I knew I needed just just a little um, more space because of the prompt level that my kids needed. So um, I wanted to make sure that I was able to track their progress that way. Um, and then I also just, I wanted, I thought, okay, I don't have to see the entire year on a page um, if, if I can do it by nine weeks. And cause I wanted to, I wanted to keep like that essence of everything being in one place. Yeah. Like, I love that about the binder rings, but if I tried to add too many squares, then, you know, I ended up getting like really thick binder rings. I thought, okay, how am I going to make this 
hold the things that I love, like still have that same place, still have that. I can look and see I took data for the week that I needed to see. Um, and so that's kind of where the whole idea was born. And so now I'm, I'm up to a page and um, I have the date, every date for the nine weeks um, from the start until the week that the nine weeks ends. And then I have a place for a score and then I have a place to put a prompt level. Um, and so this looks really different now because I'm teaching in a resource setting, mm -hmm. um, but I loved that it transferred. Yeah. It still works. Yeah. So. So tell us how you do and use this, because this is a question that I get often, and I've taught resource before, and I've done inclusion and co-taught, um, but tell us how you use what you adapted for resource. Like, how are you using the sticky note method and all of that with re in the resource setting? Yeah, so I definitely go through sticky notes, like we should buy stock and post it, because <laughs> Like that's where we are. Um, but I, I write down like all my little, you know, messy notes, all my trials on sticky notes. And then at the end of the day, it's very similar to the binder rings in that like it goes right here on the paper. Mm -hmm. So um, this student had a goal of increasing oral reading fluency from 66 words per minute up to 93 words per minute with 95% accuracy. So I'm looking for 93 words per minute at 95% accuracy. So what I do is I give us like they scored 72 words per minute. And then under the prompt level, I just go ahead and write my accuracy of 88%. So I can track those two. Yeah. Pieces. Um, but what that looks like when they're reading, um, you know, it looks like a running record um, sheet that I mark and then transfer it to this sheet. So I can just see this in one place mm -hmm. and I'm not going through, you know, right. 10 pages of Dibble's progress monitoring data or, you know, whatever running record. Um, and the same thing, even for some, you know, behavior goals, um, I don't use it as my, you know, intervention for students who have more significant behaviors. But if I have a student who's working on on task behaviors or using using a visual checklist um, to kind of monitor their on task behavior, I can see what they're doing and observe it. And I can give mm -hmm. myself some marks like, OK, here I had a student who was two out of three trials. Um, but I was able to say that two of those redirections were independent or two of those trials, um, you know, they were independent in um, following a direction and then they had one verbal prompt. So that's awesome. Um, I, don't I know love that, that you explained that. it with using <laughs> behaviors too, because that's another question that I get. And I didn't even think like when I was sending you questions, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Um, so we're like on the fly now, but that is a question that I get frequently. How do you track behavior goals with the binder rings? And uh -huh. my response, honestly, again, we're kindred spirits with this. That's, that's how I would do it too. You know, the more, I don't want to say serious behaviors, but sometimes behaviors warrant an actual data sheet, right? Yes. And then sometimes like on task behavior, you can throw that into this and call it a day and have everything in one place. So it's kind of a case by case situation. In Especially, my, for me, it was. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause we, you know, if I've got a student with more, you know, that we need to track every 45 minutes, we're doing a separate daily sheet yeah. for that. No, you can't um, fit that in here. Like, <laughs> oh, there's no way. <laughs> also kind of you know I have a strong feeling about the kids being able to hold their their behavior data and see yeah you know they have that on one sheet to see these are my expected behaviors here's how my day's going so yeah. far um and I know we're totally winging it now but yeah. that's, you know um uh, kind of where it goes, but I do, I do feel the value of being able to mark and I, you know, I pulled the sticky note out for that the same way, you know, what I'm seeing, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times, I don't know if you're familiar with PBIS rewards, but mm -hmm. we use that as our positive behavior support at my school. Yeah. So I have these little slips of paper that have a checklist of what we're doing in class for the day and the kids mark that off. Well, what I've realized is I keep those every week to award their points. Mm -hmm. Now I have data in hand to put here oh. to say, oh, they earned three extra points today. So I know that they were on task because I said, hey, give yourself a point. You're, mm -hmm. you know, I see you doing what you're, what you need to do. So yeah you can pull it from so many different places. You know, I pull fact assessments and 
um, you know, for my inclusion kids, if we do a test in a small group, I'll make a copy of the front of the test just for my records of work samples. And then I just put their score right here and it's, it's there. And yeah. I sat down and that's really what prompted that Instagram post. I'm like, I have got to tag <laughs> me in this because she doesn't know that she's changed my life, but she's changed my Aww. life. So it was like straight up legit 10 years before I found something that I really love with the binder rings. And then I was yeah. like, okay, you can tweak this and keep this working. And I had that pile of data as I sat here and did progress reports. And it felt so good. You probably had a stack of like this many papers versus like 300 binder pages, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and what I do with mine um, too, I take, I do a different color every nine weeks. Okay. So, and I just keep them stapled together. Mm-hmm. And um, so this, is, this doesn't have my sticky notes with it, but yeah. Um, normally you would flip back and the sticky notes for this nine weeks are always stuck here just so I have that because sometimes there are notes there that you know I occasionally am like I really want to know a little bit more about what I saw yeah Um, I was going to ask what you do with the sticky notes because I do something similar but keep going (laughs) yeah yeah. I I keep them um and look at what we did because sometimes I'll put a note on a sticky note too um, about a, a student's like focus level or, you know, if they came in and they weren't feeling their best, but it was, it was the week that I was, you know, doing progress monitoring. Like I do fluency every other week. Yeah. So I don't want it to, I don't want it to look like we're like, you right. know, not going so well when really I just wasn't super focused that day. And, you know, I've got kids that have a lot of life stuff happening you know, we all have a lot of life that just happens right now. So I do try to keep those on there and, um, you know, it's just kind of part of what I do. Yeah. That's similar to what I do or what I did in Mm -hmm. self-contained. So my story is kind of similar. So I taught, oh my gosh, five years. And then I went into the self-contained classroom for two and a half or three years. And that's when I came up with this, the first year that I taught that I was like, I cannot have how many, I think I had five kids that first year and the second year I had seven. I was like, there is no way I can take all of these work samples home and do progress monitoring and get it all done in time. So I came up with this and I started using note cards and then this is just like, everything's here. But then I use the sticky notes and I have my weekly sheet of like what the lesson plans are. And that's where I put all my sticky notes. And then I put all of those lesson plans into a bu- like just a folder and a filing cap, like yeah. super not Pinterest yeah. at all, but it works. And then if we come to like a meeting with a parent, I can just grab this and be like, here's the data. If you need to see it, I can pull out the lesson plans and look at the sticky notes and be like, well, she got a four out of six. This is what we were working on. And then, like you said, if I have extra notes, I can say, well, the focus was her focus was off that day or X, Y, Z, or here was the prompt level. Like Mm-hmm. I keep all the sticky notes. I keep all of that data because you never know when you're going to have to show it. Right. And parents need that extra information too. You know, that, that builds that communication with you and the rest of the IEP team and the parents. And I've definitely sat in meetings and I always take my papers with me to the meetings, um, which now is really easy because we're virtual with our meetings, but I always take it because sometimes, um, and it happened a lot with preschool too, they'll be like, man, you know, I really feel like I see them do that at home. And I can say, well, I can tell you exactly what I saw. And the parents see a lot of value in she's holding the data like, she's not just saying, oh, I think I saw that that one day. Like, I have yes. it here. Like, you it really is proof. Yes. yes. Um, and a lot of times, too, like, I leave the bottom half of my blank, especially you know, most of my guys have five or six goals, maybe seven. And so I'll put some notes there, too, that just let the parents know, you know, their attendance if we were or if they were on quarantine and they had remote learning. Like, and it does have, par- you know, when parents want to know, well, why are you missing, you know, four weeks worth of data into my classroom now is this little guy. There we go. I can hear you now. Oh, good. Sorry. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't, I didn't know if it was mine or if it was your internet. I didn't hear 
the explanation of the white sheet. I want to know about that white sheet. You didn't yes, show to know that. about this white sheet. So when I transitioned to, um, I was in preschool for a year and a half, and then we moved to Pinehurst. So I had to, I had to make a change in my job. So this white sheet, when I came back to resource, uh -huh. saved my tail. So you put the kids' names over here. I've got, you know, Shredder and Splinter and, you know, the, the Ninja Turtles um, that are they're, they're getting progress monitored currently. And so what I did um, was I just, I keep this on a clipboard in my classroom with my progress monitoring stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, if a kid needs comprehension progress monitoring, it's just checked right there. Oh or if I need like fluency. So then I can look at a glance and say, okay, who do I need to pull work samples for word problems for? You know, who yeah. has that word progress monitoring, which is, that's a big one for me. Like not everybody at third, fourth, fifth grade level needs sight words. So I'm like, like, who am I working on this with? And so it was so nice to like, okay, here it is one place. Yep, you, and it didn't take 10 minutes to set it up. And that just- That is- yeah genius I am like <laughs> oh my gosh but, and it, it, it's like you said this is not Pinteresty. it's straight no. up like, google sheets like excel you know let me just click a checkbox and look at this because I am so scared of not having my data so I, I keep my ducks in a row like <laughs> I can tell <laughs> you're, you're on that ring that you put the kindergartners on with like the little rainbow rings yeah. and like I want my ducks on that stay, stay in line though <laughs> so this is just this is just me wanting to do what I can to you know make sure I do my part for my kids and that they're getting what they need so I love that so much like it's so simple, but so functional. Well, and then I'm going, why did this take 10 years to figure out? <laughs> right? <laughs> but it did. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. That's wow. genius. And I don't think I shared that with you before. You didn't. I am I completely of... speechless right now. Sorry. <laughs> I kind of forgot about it until I was looking at mine this week for my kids and I'm going, okay, wait, what do I have myself cut? And I'm like, I should share this. This is a big part. Yes. You know, this has to, it's part of this. So, okay. So each kid gets their own like sheet of paper and you do it every nine weeks. Yes. So you every just take nine. the one, you make the one document mm -hmm. and make four copies. Well, I normally, um, what I'll do is I will, I'll print it for the nine weeks. Uh -huh. And then as I, as I update it, I just copy, I copy their page, update the goals for their new, if we, if I hold their annual, okay, and then I, just, I save it as a separate tab in the sheet. Like it's a separate page. Yeah. So I know whose have been updated and whose haven't. Okay. And so then when it comes time for, and I'll keep them in order, like, okay, up towards the front, I know that these are updated and gotcha. then everybody else, I just go through. Um, yeah. And staple it to the page that already exists and go right on back through it again and then at just do you, so how often do you update that one sheet the white sheet that you showed as kids have IEP meetings yeah. do you have so, like an IEP season or do you do IEPs all year we do IEPs all year okay so I can honestly tell you that this has been updated for the second time as of last week so so it's frequently, um, it's, it's but, frequently. but yeah. not, I mean, like I, I mean, I did it. I mean, not every single time. Yeah. Because a lot of my guys, not that their goals don't change. Their goals definitely change. But like but the concept, like the concept is comprehension. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we're working on reading fluency and I know they're at 30 words per minute, I know that next IEP we're still, we're still working on fluency. Right. Um, the big ones, honestly, that I have to watch are, um, the big thing I have to watch is behavior is, gotcha. is making sure that when I hold that IEP, that I've got that behavior box ticked and that I've got that in place. Um, the academic piece of it is much easier. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that so much. I'll share it. I'll share I, it. Yeah. I will, <laughs> I will talk Megan into sharing at least a copy of it with you guys. So you can edit it to your liking 
And then in the, um, the comments, not the comments, in the text down here somewhere, down here, wherever, what platform you're on, it's down here somewhere. <laughs> you will see a link to Megan's Instagram and whatever other um, links she wants to share where you can find her if you want to reach out and pick her brain some more about this. Um, I'm just, I'm speechless because we did not talk about that white sheet of paper. I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to throw, like, no. throw it at you last minute, but no. I was like, we got to talk about this paper. You have to talk about this paper. I'm so glad you brought it up. <laughs> that is genius. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for hopping on this call. Well, this call with me, this video to make this video for everyone else and sharing your knowledge and expertise. Like I'm so super, super pumped about this for everyone. Thank you for changing my progress monitoring life. <laughs> um, so much more peace. Cause this is something that I would worry about, like legitimately, yeah. how am I going to do this? Well, so I really appreciate that resource so much. And, um, just, you know, being able to share it in another way was like, Ooh. Oh my gosh, are going to be able to give that piece to so many other people now teaching them how to adapt it. And that white sheet of paper, man, like, whew. <laughs> that is genius well again all of the links are below this video wherever that happens to be and if you guys have any questions you can reach out to me you can reach out to megan and we are so happy that you tuned in and we will see you guys next time